the movie kicks off with Jess and Gerald packing for a weekend getaway to their lake house. Things take an unexpected turn when they encounter a dog in the middle of the road. Gerald, seemingly unfazed, stops the car just in time to avoid hitting the dog. Despite the close call, Gerald shows little concern for the dog, and they proceed to their destination. Upon arriving at the country house, Jess starts cooking some meat for the stray dog they encountered earlier. The dog, drawn by the scent, finds its way to Jess. However, when Gerald discovers her in the act of feeding the dog, he expresses displeasure. Gerald reminds Jess that the meat costs $200 apiece and reprimands her for wasting it on a stray dog. The scene unfolds as Jess awaits Gerald in the bedroom. When he emerges holding a pair of handcuffs and reveals he took Viagra, Jess feels uneasy about the idea of restraint. Despite her discomfort, she reluctantly goes along to please him. However, as the encounter progresses, Jess senses a shift into uncomfortable territory, and she becomes frightened by Gerald's behavior. Feeling the need to break character, Jess confronts Gerald about the direction things are heading. Despite his attempts to apologize, she asserts that experimenting in the bedroom won't salvage their deteriorating marriage. Gerald, undeterred, tries to coerce her, but Jess reaches her limit and headbutts him. The situation takes a drastic turn when Gerald, having taken a Viagra pill, goes into cardiac arrest. Handcuffed to the bed, Jess is helpless as his body falls on top of her. Panicking, she screams for him to wake up and desperately tries to push him off the bed. Despite her efforts, Gerald is unresponsive and bleeding heavily. The shocking reality sets in for Jess, her husband is dead. The room becomes a chilling scene of tragedy and the unexpected consequences of their evening. Jess teeters on the brink of losing her sanity when she hears movement in the house. Hoping for the arrival of friends coming to her rescue, she is surprised to find the stray dog from earlier. Helpless, she watches as the dog looks over her husband's lifeless body, eventually attempting to lick Gerald's blood off the floor. Desperate to protect Gerald's remains, Jess tries to yell at the dog, but the animal remains undeterred. Tragically, the dog bites a chunk out of Gerald's arm and Jess is forced to witness the gruesome scene without the ability to intervene. In the midst of her screams, she is stunned to see Gerald's lifeless body seemingly resurrect, scolding the dog for its actions. Terrified and confused, Jess realizes that Gerald's body is still on the ground, and she begins to hallucinate. In her hallucination, a version of herself encourages her to free herself from the handcuffs. Despite her efforts, she fails to break free, and the hallucination takes a darker turn chastising her for wasting precious time while Gerald's lifeblood seeps away. Exhaustion overwhelms her, and despite her best efforts to stay awake, the stress takes its toll, and she drifts into a restless sleep. Several hours later, she awakens to the sound of a dog barking outside. Although she initially perceives a man standing ominously in the room, she soon realizes that he is just another figment of her tortured imagination. She then reminisces about the times she had with her family when she was younger. She had a relatively peaceful upbringing until one day her dad molested her when she was younger during a family trip to see the solar eclipse. This memory causes Jess to spiral even more, trying to terrify her. Jess is informed by Gerald's hallucination that the enigmatic man she observed is the Moonlight Man tasked with ending her life and confiscating any jewelry she possesses. This revelation prompts her to vehemently demand the hallucination to cease its disturbing presence. In the aftermath, she recollects how her father manipulated her into keeping silent about the traumatic incident with him, driven by a paralyzing fear of her mother's potential reaction. Regrettably, this fear compelled her to comply with her father's wishes. Suddenly, Jess awakens to the peril of a dog attempting to attack her while she sleeps. Fortunately, she summons the strength to fend off the canine's aggression. Coincidentally, Gerald's hallucination reappears, forewarning her that death will inevitably catch up with her sooner or later. Disguised as the Moonlight Man, Geraldine informs her that her demise will go unnoticed. Determined to resist, she retreats into her memories in a desperate search for a solution. Later that night, she dreams about the solar eclipse day, confronting her inner child accusing her of abandonment. However, the inner child advises her to revisit that fateful day to find an escape from her handcuffs, recalling a past incident where she broke a glass and used the flowing blood to her advantage. Jess battles the discouragement from Gerald's hallucination. Her own hallucination urges her to act swiftly due to dehydration. As a final attempt, Jess seizes a cup of water, breaking it with her right hand. 
In agonizing pain, she extracts her hand from the handcuffs, tearing flesh and skin down to bones and nerves. Despite retrieving her phone, she discovers its dead battery, prompting her to search the bathroom for the key to the remaining handcuff. Successfully liberating herself, she attempts to bandage her wounded hand but succumbs to unconsciousness due to dehydration and blood loss. Later that night, Jess awakens beneath the bed to the dog's renewed attempt to attack her prompted by the deteriorating state of Gerald's corpse. Turning around, she is confronted by the Moonlight Man standing in the hallway. Brave and resolute, she approaches him, requesting her ring. To her surprise, he allows her to leave, and she secures Gerald's car keys. Driving away, Jess unexpectedly loses consciousness again. Upon waking up, she finds herself back on the day of the solar eclipse, with the Moonlight Man seated in the back seat. Startled, she jolts awake as her car crashes into a tree, resulting in severe injuries. Spotting police officers nearby, she summons the last of her strength to honk the car horn, drawing their attention to her accident as they rush towards her. As she steps out of the car, Jess succumbs to unconsciousness due to severe bleeding. Several months later, she is on the path to recovery, grappling with both her physical injuries and the loss of her husband. Though her hands are healing gradually, her overall condition has significantly improved. Despite the progress, Jess continues to be haunted by recurring dreams of the Moonlight Man and the traumatic day of the solar eclipse. Determined to channel her experiences into something positive, she establishes a foundation to support victims of child molestation. However, her journey takes an unexpected turn when she reads in the newspaper that the Moonlight Man, named Ramon, has been apprehended by the police for serial killing and various charges. Feeling a newfound sense of security, Jess decides to confront Ramon during his court hearing, hoping to put an end to the nightmares that plague her every night. When the day arrives, she faces him, discovering that he is a real person with physical deformities, dispelling the notion that he was merely a hallucination. Filled with a sense of vindication, Jess briefly observes him in handcuffs, about to face trial before a judge, and then leaves abruptly. Taking a deep breath, Jess walks away, prideful and determined. She heads home, ready to move forward from the dark chapter that has haunted her, embracing a newfound strength and closure.